Hey, I'm Matt with Let's Talk Music. I'm here with Jeannie. Uh, he is the bass player for Phasers Engage. And as we would just discussed, the brainchild, the, the main writer for the band. How you doing today, man? I'm doing well. Very good. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank, thank you for being on. So, uh, yeah, we, we've had quite the runaround recently, scheduling problems and whatever, but at least we got to finally connect. So That's uh, the important thing. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about Phasers Engage, man. I mean, how did you guys form? I, re uh, I was really inspired by um, a lot of electronic music I heard. I had a progressive metal background before that. Uh, I met up with uh, someone in college, and we were talking about music, and I was talking about the possibilities of uh, fusing uh, like a live band with like uh, a DJ or producer elements to it. and uh, you know, I talked to enough people, eventually one of them, him and I ended up recording together, and that was the first track. We um, worked out like a super rough, you know, demo version of, of that, of course. We added to it later, but uh, that's pretty much how it started. Okay. So now, when you say that you're the main writer, um, you're mainly composing, correct? I mean, because there's no lyrics to your music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah no current no current lyrics okay and, and i mean is that is that tough to do um yes uh i i would think so um and i do think so especially uh in such an experimental band um in such uh odd unique project it's really hard to get people on the same page so mm -hmm. just having the drive to try to make the music and uh, get other people on board with you, talk to enough people and try and get members, try out members, these people didn't work, you move on, that that kind of thing. And, um, you know, it, it took us quite a while to get our our demo record uh, departure initiated out mm -hmm. uh, because, because of that. Uh, I was very thankful we got the lineup we did. Um, the guitarist and the drummer were added for the record and... Um, I, I think they knocked out of the park. They really uh, made the album what it was. Cool. Yeah, and uh, that d Departure Initiated, that's your debut album, correct? Correct. Okay, and the, the new single, Awoken Intelligence. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I, I was digging it, man. Uh, I, I, it's, I, I give everything a chance, you know what I mean? And there's just some things I'm like, yeah, you know, and other things I'm like, oh, that's really cool. And I, I like what you guys did with it. Um, it's, you know, you got a lot of synth to it. You got, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some, uh, some funky guitar. So it, 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 it kind of fits into just like, I, I think if you was to listen to it without being on YouTube or whatever, it, and just, you can use your imagination with that song. I mean, it's, it's, it's really cool and i mean the the visuals that you have for it was pretty awesome too did did you create those or did somebody else do that for you uh all the visual works me yeah okay yeah so it's it's got seven tracks on it it does it and does. uh this is the second single what was the first one um off the record it was kind of I was kind of in between Awoken Intelligence and 11.2. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we released it. Awoken Intelligence should have been the first single. Maybe uh, maybe somewhere in the, the writing, it, it got different. So it's either that one or 11.2. I guess whichever one you're running to first. Okay. Well, I mean, you guys are definitely getting some love. I mean, I, I checked out, you know, when I looked you up, I, you you know, Music Existence, uh, Anti-Hero Magazine, Brutal Planet Magazine, you know, they've all written about the album and, and you know, however things, the, the the tracks and everything. And I mean, that's that's an awesome start. Mm -hmm. It is. I was uh, very proud of it. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's I, especially being a debut album and, and, and you're, you're coming from, you said progressive rock, so you're coming from a total different genre to this and you know as you said it's an experimental project and it's it's cool that you know people that online magazines are getting involved with it you yeah, know and and that was very thankful 
that was the same thing with with myself you know i mean tom was like you know it, it's all instrumental blah blah and i'm like hey man I, i'm gonna game for whatever you know i i don't I, i'll do that, that's why it's called let's talk music it's not let's talk rock music or let's talk metal music it's let's talk music mm -hmm. you know so awesome. speaking of which um influences man i mean where did you draw influence for i mean I, I wouldn't say for your progressive metal but for your electronic where where does that come from um i was really inspired by a band called big gigantic a bunch of years ago and uh they were really getting to me and i was really liking them i really liked their approach to it i think as a kid like i really liked hearing um like video game music i was playing like a lot of sega and all that kind of just sounds like techno the 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 layman's term for like techno that's why i called it back then obviously there's huge genres and that terms you know under the electronic umbrella right um but you know i heard like sandstorm and stuff when i was a teenager and there's always like this electronic interest uh, in me and i always kind of heard it and kind of wanted to see what more it could do. I wanted to see what would happen if you had more of a, a musical intention behind it, you know, more of a, like a jam or melodic band pushing um, that kind of writing. Um, so Big Gigantic and uh, a project called Spangle was huge influence on me. Um, and, uh, really the concept of combining that idea that idea of the electronic production and with uh like allman brothers specifically mm -hmm. on the jam end of things really was was my personal drive for phasers engaged okay now you're pretty much the the starting member mm -hmm. that's what i'm getting from okay so yeah i mean it's <clears throat> Those are uh, definitely some good influences. I, I I don't know about the electronic ones, but I do know about the Almond Brothers. So you know my uh, I I guess I never really got into electronic simply because most electronic is associated with dancing, and dude, I I can't dance worth a shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I would go to the bars and listen to it, and I kind of bob my head and stuff, and you know, but I I would not get that out there on the dance floor. And I mean, you know, you would have you know 50 60 to 100 people out there just jamming i mean it's it's definitely so is that something that you guys are are doing is is, is your are you playing like a club atmosphere or are you looking to play you know a co concert atmosphere we're trying to play more club and cop i guess both club and concert um we'd like to get in the club scene uh right now because of i think because mostly because of my background and the people that I know and the music scenes that are around here, we usually end up uh, at rock shows or mm -hmm. metal shows, even though we we do want to get into more like the rave scene. We actually want to like a band to show up in the middle of a rave and just like jam out for a while and throw down real hard. And 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 that that's our goal but right now we've been kind of thrown in with like progressive music mm -hmm. um you know we're interesting enough instrumentally uh to get away with it and uh a lot of us in the band know those kind of people and uh those kind of promoters so that's where we we've, we've been playing we would like to get more into the get into more of like the electronic specific club and uh rave scene those are my next goals okay um now does <clears throat> does the other guys share the same musical background or do they all come from diverse musical backgrounds um most of us are metalheads pretty okay. much all the instrumentalists anyone playing um like an organic instrument bass cut bass guitar and drum uh we're all metalheads knew each other from metal bands um and i asked uh i asked them to join the this experimental project uh the electronic influence came when i met um a variant in college and that and he was 
more of the EDM head. He was more into into the electronic um, music scene, and he knew the production end. He knew the sounds and and the programs, and um, you know the end the ends of it that I didn't really understand because of my instrument. And we we linked to each other because we we each found strength in that. You know, he knew more about the electronic end. I knew more about the uh, the band uh, jam. You know the instrument and and uh the the album sprawled out from that okay i actually man i was just thinking like i i think a, a killer show that you guys would fit right into would be coachella yeah yeah yeah, it's, yeah, it's, we'd, yeah we'd love to be there we're, we're got got so much diversity in it i mean you got you got rock you got rap you got just everything and that I mean that that's the that's the kind of crowd you want to be playing in front of right there in, yeah. in the desert, you know. Yeah, you know we want to promote it for it. Uh, send them our way. I I wish, man. I'm I'm building contacts, but none like that yet. Same, same. That's what it's about, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, so when we was first talking, you you said that it's all instrumental for now. So mm -hmm. are you? thinking that you're going to add lyrics later to an, a, a next EP or LP or. Absolutely. Absolutely. We got songs um, in de in half demo form, half, you know, pre-production, you know, floating around ideas, you know, unfinished ideas. Um, but we, we already have some of the material rolling in the background. We totally intend on it and uh, we will be releasing a, alternative version to departure initiated and uh we're calling it story mode so we're gonna be including narration from our from like the storyline end of it because it's a it's a concept record right but we didn't we didn't want the narration in everything so we decided to have a little bit of a video game reference there and uh, have the regular version and then have a story mode version and uh, my intention is to get vocals on uh, one of the tracks from that. <clears throat> yeah, I, I love concept albums, really. Um, I mean, Same. Operation Mindcrime was a concept album, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I feel like that's one of the best uh, concept albums out there, you know, as far as just being a, a storyline to it. And um, <clears throat> I, I feel like... A, a lot of bands need to do more of that because it's um it's just really cool to when you can get kind of like uh you know Nikki Six he wrote you know that book uh the heroin diaries and 6 a.m had the album that went along with it you know you read it and kind of reminded me of like when I was a kid you know the different kind of books where uh you would almost like a mystery book where you would read through it and it says, Oh, dead end, go back to this page, you know, or whatever. And, you know, it, it's, it is, it's, it's really cool to follow that along. And some of them, I mean, you know, like operation mind crime was, was a bit difficult when I was younger to understand, but you know, now that I'm older, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I think you guys, yeah, that's, that's a great idea. Cause it, the, the industry needs more concept al albums. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, and uh, a lot of concept albums that are out there I've loved, you know. Big fan of uh, Devin Townsend. You know, Ziltoid was fantastic. Yep. So, um, you guys looking to get a label, or you like being independent? What, what's what's your feel on the music industry there? Uh, I have not... I've never really turned... I never really want to say no to the idea of a label. Uh, I feel like we needed more momentum first. So I really focused on that. We had material, we had material for a long time and it really needed to get out. It really needed to get out before it fizzled out, you know, like a lot of projects do. So right. really that was my focus. Um, now that it's out, I really see it as sky's the limit. Um, it would have to be under certain conditions. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of some of my concerns, labels particularly wouldn't appreciate 
um they wouldn't appreciate me like keeping like 100 percent of like the recording rights and the yeah, production yeah. rights and think yeah they don't they don't want to do that right so like if there's a way to like synergize the situation in which i'm not handing over complete control or something like that i would consider that i also i also don't know maybe maybe i would um i've really just focused on the music i haven't really spoken to a lawyer and and gotten real deep into that even though you know those are definitely next steps right yeah. yeah yeah the business end is uh is a little more i think and it's it's something that i i, I feel like a lot of people you know just fans and stuff that they don't realize is that music is it is it's a business and um mm -hmm. I, I know a lot of guys that i've talked to that have been signed with labels big labels whatever they're a lot more happier independent because they have that full control they have creative control you know you're not mm. you don't have somebody in a studio saying oh man you, we gotta scratch that out and put this in you know and uh, it's been a uh, an ongoing thing but it, it's like uh, that's where it's hard though because it's all you you don't have that financial and and marketing backing and everything but i mean you guys have a publicist already which you know is a good thing he reached out to me i mean where where are you located uh syracuse new york okay so i mean i'm uh no, about eight hours from you but you know where where are you i'm in columbus ohio oh nice nice yeah and i mean tom i think he's in iowa so you know yeah. and and that's the thing i mean it, it's it's kind of cool because there you are in Syracuse. It's reached Columbus. It's reached Iowa. It's reached you know these three magazines wherever they're out of. You yep. know, so yeah, so one of them is Chicago. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, you're getting out there. I mean, working how, on it, yeah. how how do you feel about the uh, the success of the band so far? Uh I feel good about it thus far. I am eager to get it out and play it more live right. uh, that's really where we're at we've had a few shows since the album release um they've been local to us we're just really eager to find uh management or booking agent um and really that's the direction in which i'm going to be pushing rather than mm -hmm. looking for a label i'm first you know i'm going to be looking into booking and promotion right yeah, I mean, you got to get yourself out there before you try to go to a label. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, how, how have the, you say you've done a few live shows, so how has the response been with those? We have a, a lot of good response. Uh, as I said, we played metal shows, so my outlook on it, uh, when we walk up there looking like a bunch of hippies ready to um, play this pretty hard hitting party music is uh um mentally i go into it think you know with the attitude of this is the party you weren't expecting to have right like like who the hell is this on stage and what did i just watch like what i was not expecting to have this fun time out of nowhere that that's pretty much been my attitude about it and from there we've been very successful um our boss battle of the album uh eight bit monster that's what that is it's our boss battle and when we play that live we usually have um a physical boss battle will uh, the band will be attacked by the eight bit monster um uh you know obviously a friend of ours in costume and all but right comes out messes with with the band fights us and everything and it's a good time and it's uh it's not something people expect and that's really what i want out of shows because there's a lot of bands out there and what's had the most effect on me um is when i see something i really don't expect uh, yeah. out of a show you know so with the progressive background um 
do you do you plan on at any point in time sticking with that or going back to that or are you just wanting to move ahead with the electronic phasers and gauge uh, i haven't i haven't uh, ruled out um doing progressive and doing uh, metal and things like that i am in uh, a couple other budding projects um you know in, in their infant stage so I'm involved in other music as well. I think um, for me personally, I've been the most musically satisfied when I've had multiple uh, outlets of music and at least like two two projects, but like very different from each other. Right. You know, that's when I've felt the most accomplished uh, and um, re uh, I guess reward is a bad word, but the most fulfilled right so how long how long you been playing bass man how long you been in the music scene about 20 years 21 years hmm, okay and always before now always been progressive rock or uh progressive metal yeah yeah mostly i've um i toured a little bit with a death metal band i filled in uh for a few shows with some other style metal bands before but uh yeah i was uh i had a 14 year career in a band um oh, okay in a prog in a progressive metal band so. so what is it that got you into music man i mean did you did you have like a, a musical background at home or was it just a, a video that you seen or you know a song that you heard that you're like oh i want to do that I really think it's all the songs I heard, man. And I think it's, I just wanted to do all that. You know, what really, when, when my consciousness was kicking in was during the nineties. So all that popular music was, I was getting bombarded with uh, by my sisters and, you know, I was getting the, the more metal influences um, from other siblings, but so so I was really being hit by like like the 90s and obviously I I really just loved it all and I really just wanted to be a part of all of it and you know I just I knew that I had to participate in this and it was never really a question in my mind it was just I love this I want to do this I want to create experiences for other people uh, um the way that i've had experiences created for me by other musicians that that's an awesome explanation i like that thank you uh do you do you just play a four string do you play a five string what what, what do you get funky with i get funky with the six string my man nice so obviously being in the 90s and stuff uh less claypool is that one of your favorites or uh i It'd be unfair if I said he was uh, one of my top favorites. Um, everyone loves him for his shreddy stuff in Primus. I, I, I appreciated a little bit more of his uh, side project material, mm -hmm. like under under Les Claypool himself. Um, it was a little bit more, a little bit more purposeful of a musical approach, and that's that's uh, when I really appreciated it. Um, Cliff Burton was a a huge influence on me oh yeah uh, yeah you know like it's um it's interesting talking about like your instrument because uh, like are you a musician yourself no no um okay. i tried not very good at it <laughs> well thank you for participating in it because that's that, that's great we need people to talk about it and be into it even if you're not not a musician so uh thank you for your services um yeah so what uh what bass do you like to play? I mean, what brand? Uh Sound Gear. It's a off brand of Ibanez. Okay. Um uh, but yeah, I just, just re remembered the uh the thought I was going with, but uh like a lot of people they'll hear that you play an instrument and they ask you about your influences in that particular instrument. You know, but like there's like so many like more that usually like get unsaid you know like even bass players you know they you know i have 
favorite drummers. I have favorite, you know, guitar players. Guitarists probably had um, a huge, they had more of an impact on me than some bass players just because of their lyrical quality to it. And I've always kind of been more of a lead player myself because of that. Right. You know, your appreciation for other instruments can blossom f into into other things, you know. Um, musicians are affected by the entire scope of bands. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, <clears throat> I know that there's usually a person or an influence or, or something that made you pick up that particular instrument. And that's kind of all I was searching for, you know. I mean, you know, I... I can list different singers, guitar players, rhythm guitar players, bassists, you know, whatever yeah. going on, you know, yeah. that, that I think are amazing. Um, speaking of which, like, you know, as far as bass, uh, oh, uh, Geezer Butler, did you know that he was actually a rhythm guitarist before he was a bass player? I didn't know that. Yeah. So uh, he, uh. before he joined Black Sabbath, he was a rhythm guitarist. And that's why his bass playing is so just. I want to say complicated because I mean, if you really listen to his bass lines, that they're not your typical, you know, mm -hmm. he it's almost like he's strumming a, a rhythm guitar. Yeah. Uh, it's very melodic. Yes. It, it is how I would call it. And yeah, those and Black Sabbath was a huge influence on me. Fairies wear boots. Uh, the, the day I got to see that live was one of the best days of my life. Um, you, you just love you love those melodies that those guys play and uh when my favorite bassists are the ones that do mm, not always not always do more than they have to because you have to learn to like fill the role sometimes for for the song right mm -hmm. but when they can be more lyrical when they can be more melodic and really push push the melody further and add to the song in a brighter way those are those are some of my favorite uh like uh david morris and um uh, ryan martin very very melodic players right so you mentioned cliff burton um do you like to use a wah i was using a wah for a while i really liked it kind of kind of crapped out on me uh i would totally use one again uh, I just haven't got one. But yeah, they, they, when I used one, it was particularly fun. I, I kind of was thinking about that. Like, you know, how, how would that fit in with the music that you're making now? It would kind of give it that, uh, I can't even explain or even think of what kind of sound it would give it, but I, I think that would be pretty cool incorporated into your, your electronic sound. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh totally plan on throwing one back in my rig sometime oh yeah what kind of uh speaking of gear i mean what kind of amps and stuff do you like to use I'm a big hard key fan okay yeah i always i i kind of like to get a feel for you know just the person too that i'm talking to not just you know your album your music and whatever you know mm -hmm. it, it, your your likes your dislikes i mean i, I talk to guys that are like you know well, it's sponsored by this guitar, but, uh, you know, I don't want to say this, but I prefer this one. You know, I mean, I was just at a concert the other day, I, and this guy, <clears throat> he, you know, pulls out this Ibanez. It's like his go-to. And I was like, that you said you was, you know, sponsored by Schechter. And he's like, well, I am. I said, should play that. And he's like, yeah, I guess I should. And he ended up playing for the whole concert. But, you know, it's, <clears throat> it's just uh, a... <clears throat> I know everybody had their go-to instrument and his was this Ibanez that, you know, was kind of beat up that he's just been playing since, you know, forever. Mm -hmm. and, and people, yeah. they, they do, they, they stick to what they love, you know, what, what works best for them. I mean, I have a friend that plays guitar and uh, he bought a Schecter and he said he had it all set up before he got it. And he said, man, I think damn near plays itself. He's like, it, it's just so easy to play. So yeah, people who love Schecter's man, I got a lot of friends who love them, and they they love them. They go Schecter, they don't go back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I've I, I've had a what I have a SG. I had a Gibson Epiphone, and um, well, I think that's about it. I had an acoustic too at one point. I don't, I can't remember what it might have been a Martin that I bought off of a friend, nice. but you know. 
again, just, I, I don't think I really had the patience for it. And, and that's what I admire you guys for, man, as, as your, your patience, your dedication, your, you know, I, I love music uh, almost as much as my family. You know what I mean? It, it, music has been there for me all my life. Uh, you know, I, I've, as much as I've hated it, I've rolled with the changes, you know, where we went from hair metal to grunge and, you know, but cause I was a huge hair metal fan, but you know, um, I've rolled with the changes and it, it's just always been a passion of mine. And that's why I do what I do. And, and to be able to talk to you guys and to get you, you know, even if it's, you know, if it's a hundred views or 10,000 views, at least, you know, those people have seen who you are and, you know, because what, what I've started doing is like, I take all of your socials and put it in the description. And that way, when people go down there, because I do put, you know, check out in the description. Let's just go with you guys and say the video for, you know, Awoken Intelligence. And they'll go down to the description, hit that. Then there's your, you know, if you have a website, there's your Facebook, there's your Instagram, all that stuff. So um, I appreciate that. That's that's kind of my goal, man, is, is to get you guys out there. It's, it's not, um, I mean, as much as I'd love to be some big record executive and, and getting paid all kinds of money for this, um, it's more of just a love and a hobby, man that's what it's about that's what drives the industry so that's the reason the industry blew blew up and there can be ceos now right um, you know there can be you know because there were more passionate um uh, more musically attached people uh, i feel like a lot of more business-minded people are running the larger businesses in some cases oh, yeah. uh, now but that was that was a big shift that happened you know a decade or two ago like mm -hmm. you're saying from the 90s you know all those guys producing all those all those awesome pop songs like a lot of those guys were were the funk musicians you know right. so like that's why there's such a kick-ass bass line in there because those a funk player like that's those were the guys writing music and and to me in 90s was a magical era because like i joke around i say even the worst bands were awesome like they were like even the music you freaking hate it, it was well done and creative like you might not like it for whatever reasons and that's 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 important to analyze too mm -hmm. is uh why you don't like things and i think that's just as valuable as as why you like things yeah 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 it's it's it, it's an ever-changing industry man and i mean it you either you either roll with it or you get left behind, you know? And I, I've noticed that cause I, I, I got bands that were like my favorites back in the day and now they're playing state fairs and shit, you know? And I'm like, man, you know, but I, I still go see them. I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. I've done it too. Especially there. New York has an enormous, enormous state fair. Mm -hmm. um, and I've, I've seen huge bands there. I saw Sticks because of it. I saw Gin Blossoms, uh, Blues Traveler, bands that I, I love from my childhood that I wouldn't have seen otherwise. Right. But, you know, those also are the venues that are big enough to hold those bands. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that can afford them. Oh, yeah. So I, I can't complain. I've seen a lot of good shows because of it. Oh, I have too. I mean, it's it just, you know, it, it, I think anymore, it's like everybody's goal was to get on the festivals, you know, because they just, they keep popping up. You, you know, you got all the Danny Wimmer festivals, you've got uh, Blue Ridge, you got just mm -hmm. so many yeah. of them popping up and it's like, that's people's ultimate goal anymore. And, and I, I, well, I we're trying like, to, huh? It's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and well, that's where it's at. I, I do feel like it, it hurts the music scene a, a, a bit because we have what was rock on the range. Now it's Sonic temple, but okay. like a lot of those big bands and then we have uh, incarceration that then Mansfield, um, a lot of those big bands that play those, they don't come back, you know, they don't play the smaller venues and, and you know, it's like, it, it kind of sucks because you're like, man, well, I wasn't able to make it to that festival. I'd really like to see them. And, you, you know, they're you know, a couple hundred miles away or whatever. And it just, it, I, I feel like it has kind of hurt the, the smaller venues. And, and Columbus is, is a huge rock town. 
um you know we've got actually one of the it's the oldest running or consecutive running rock club in the united states and that's the newport music hall it used to be the oh, club wow. agora but uh we got a new place called king of clubs man i've been to so many concerts there great venue owned by a guy that's in a band so you know he he don't go crazy on the beer prices the food prices you know he doesn't take a percentage of the merch from from the band you know and and he's, yeah, good. he yeah he he books you know pretty decent talent so you guys are look, get, looking to get out and play man look that place up the king of clubs in columbus man there that uh they i mean they just had a k-pop band there so you know what i mean they're they're not strictly rock uh king of clubs in columbus you got you know anyone from there i know the owner Ah, oh yes, you you did just uh, mention that. Yeah, maybe after the uh, maybe after the interview, we can exchange that information. All right, brother. Well, uh, we are almost out of time. I've got the the cheapo plan, <laughs> so but I I really do. I appreciate you finally getting with me, man. And I apologize for it, you know. Oh no, no worries. I was just glad. I was just glad it worked. And uh, everything worked out, and you were okay. And you know, there's no like emergencies or whatever. Um, and plus, I man, I tried to message you for like a week, and there's something weird with my phone and emailing you and and Tom. Mm -hmm. It like keeps going to Q, and it just won't leave Q. And I just like keep trying to resend you something. So in order to actually send out an email, I tried like five times on my phone. I had to use a computer and for some reason I was able to send you an email. So like there was weird stuff on my end too. So I'm very, um, very thankful we were able to do it. I very much appreciate uh, uh, the conversation and the questions you brought. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. And um, you know, you can go on that same link there and, and I'll send you my personal email. That way. I appreciate that. Yeah. That way. Yeah. All right, brother. Well, I, I'm a, uh getting ready to do something here in a few minutes i'm not even going to mention what it is but uh i, I do appreciate well, good, well good luck with it right i do appreciate your time and man best of luck with phasers engage thanks see you soon take care Later.